Thank you for having me. My name is John Winchell. I live in Eden, New York. I've been in the dairy business about 25 years. I currently work with Alltech as a territory sales representative. I'm very interested in mycotoxins and how they interact with plants and animals and the repercussions that we see on the farms. Well, it certainly has been a pretty colorful year in regards to mycotoxins and feed hygiene issues. As for the Northeast in 2018 and 19, really the wet second half of the summer of 2018 created a storm of what I'd call field-borne fusarium molds and mycotoxins. I mean, I've seen elevated deoxynovalenol or DON numbers exceeding the levels from the last three years. There's also been quite a surge in xeralinone that I've seen, more so in the last year than I have in the last three. I mean, we still see T2, HT2 at moderate levels, as well as fumonisins, and quite a dose of penicilliums and an additional fusaric acid here and there. This mycotoxin soup creates quite a few problems as these mycotoxins are pretty synergistic. So I have seen situations where you have high Don, T2, and penicilliums, and you will have lost milk production in the dairy world, loss of components, loose manure, and I kind of call it a toxic triangle, and it can cost the producer money from many different angles. That's a great question. During the fall harvest, we saw a high level of Don in the harvested corn crops. And as the wet weather increased and the harvest dragged on into November and December, I started to see spikes in xeralinone and T2 production in corn, but the levels in Don seemed pretty static. I think with the slow corn dry down, the wet weather, and the bouncing temperatures that we had made for mycotoxin production of xeralinone and T2HT2 as the graphics show. Recently, this spring, I'm seeing spikes in storage toxins in penicillium and aspergillus families starting to emerge, which makes sense with the way forages were harvested last year and what we're running into with the wet weather this year. In 2018 and 19, I've seen the typical issues that you see with higher levels of mycotoxin, traditional dry matter intake changes, immune suppression that you see with Don, the loose manure and digestive upsets that go along with T2, HT2, and now I've been starting to see a lot more reproductive issues and abortions that go along with the huge surge that I've seen in xeralinone this year. I mean, this can cost a producer thousands of dollars in lost income in various different ways. I mean, the big issue is when these mycotoxins are present at the same time, you get a loss of performance and growth due to the synergistic relationships with the mycotoxins. You couple this with the stressors on the farm or from the weather, and you get these mycotoxin storms that you see come up. I say this so often, but testing is very, very critical. We need to find out what mycotoxins we're dealing with by the crop that we're using, as well as find out a baseline for what we're dealing with depending on the region that we live in. We need to be a lot more proactive, in my opinion, than reactive, especially when it comes to issues with food safety and animal safety. The more routine testing that we can do, the better the accuracy and the control of these mycotoxins in both the animal and the food safety chain. The Neogen Monday Mycotoxin and Crop Report is kind of my go-to Monday report. And in the report, I can get crop data, weather data, regional data, and mycotoxin trends by crop. And it's very important to see how harvests are coming off in certain areas so that we can help out the customers in those areas. And also the special reports you get from whether it's Tony's tips to guests like Dr. Max Hawkins or other guests, it's a nice addition because it's usually very timely and that helps quite a bit. I've been using the Q Plus Max lateral flow test for quite a while and been using the Raptor as well, and I've been very happy with both. As for the Q Plus Max kits, I really like their ease of use. 
The one thing that is a real big advantage is the use of one extraction for multiple mycotoxin results because it really, really saves time in the field. And as for the Raptor, I feel it's the great next generation to the AccuScan Gold Reader, as well as state of the art in the industry for readers in general. The Raptor reduces sample time, in my opinion, by having these multiple ports that enable you to test multiple samples at one time. And that's a big, big difference. Also, the internal timing system reduces the extra time spent and gives you a final result and you can start another sample simultaneously with that. And now with the addition of the Raptor Solo, with it being a cordless device, I use it a lot on farm and at the tailgate level so that I can get samples and results as quick as I possibly can. And this shaves off a lot of time that the customer might be dealing with mycotoxin issues. So I think the Raptor and the Raptor Solo have been wonderful additions. Well, I feel that the main advantage of infield testing is decreasing the reaction time on the farm or at the mill. Traditional methods of mycotoxin detection and testing can take a week to two weeks, depending on the type of sample that you're running. A lot of times, on-farm identification can take 30 to 45 days to find out that they have an issue. With the mobility of the new Raptor Solo, for example, you can run samples on the farm or on the tailgate and have answers in under 10 minutes depending on what crop you're testing. Well, in my opinion, I believe both Neogen and Alltech have been on the cutting edge and have been leaders in the mycotoxin field for years. I think the different tests are very complementary. You get the best of both worlds. You get the instant accurate results with the Raptor, Raptor Solo, or AccuScan Gold. And on the other hand, you get more comprehensive results with the 37 Plus. They're both very accurate, they're just different tests. With the 37 Plus, you get results of over 50 mycotoxins now using liquid chromatography and double mass spec technology. And I think when you have the ability to have a quick sampling as well as a detailed sampling, that will help you find out what you're running into on the farm and at the mill. My experiences so far with the Raptor Solo have been really, really good. I've been so happy with the mobility that we have with the Raptor Solo and now utilizing the Q Plus Max test with it as well shortens the time span of testing. And the way I look at it, I have the ability to test anytime, anywhere. I can pretty much test and have that information in a short period of time, whether it's in the barn office, at the feed mill, on the tailgate of my truck, wherever. To me, it's the ultimate in portability. And really, as, as things go now, that's what everyone is after, is accurate, quick testing and mobility. I think the best recommendations I can give is test, test, test. Testing is critical. We need to know what we're dealing with by crop so that we can know how to take care of the issue. Whether it is at the feed mill, the farm, or in the field, you need to know what levels you have with speed and with accuracy. And actually, I've been seeing more of a trend with grain farms using the Raptor to test their corn before they leave their facility so that they know their levels and can make better decisions and save time, money, and deliver a higher quality product to the end user. So to me, I think that's very important, but we have to know what we're dealing with first.